Welcome back to the channel and today I have a beginner's tutorial showing you guys how to use keyframes in Blender. Now I'll just quickly mention just in case you have no idea what keyframes are. Essentially in Blender or any 3D software you have a timeline where your frames update and that is essentially giving you animation. But keyframes are things we can add to certain values. Like in this case I have these location, rotation and scale transforms here. They tell Blender where something is in 3D space and how it's positioned, how it's rotated. And we can come here and add keyframes. We can lock those values in on a certain frame, then go to the next frame or any frame we want and change those values, adding in another keyframe. And Blender will automatically interpolate between those things. And not only can we change things like the position, in this example as well, I'm gonna show you how we can change the color in the viewport display. I'm gonna show you how we can take just a random modifier and change a property or a value over time. And it's just gonna be something that really will introduce you as a beginner to the concept of keyframes in a Blender. So let's jump in and I hope you guys learn something. So one of the easier ways to demonstrate, I think, is with the default cube. So we have a new scene opened in Blender 4.0. Make sure you click and select your default cube and then come here to your timeline. And personally, I like to just left click and drag it up a little bit just to give us a little bit more real estate. And as you probably already know, this thing here is a little slider, you can drag it and this shows you where you are along the timeline. By default, Blender has 250 frames along the timeline. And you can change this value, but for now we'll leave these values as they are. And when we wanna come here, we'll just um, slide this along. Or you can come here to this little thing here and use these tabs, or just manually type in a number, but I prefer just to drag the slider. Okay, so whenever we wanna take for example, so let's press N on our keyboard. Let's go to our item. Wherever we want to take one of these um, transforms here, whether it's the location, rotation, or scale, okay, we can come here under our transforms and change them, right? And once we've changed some of these things over here, the different transforms, we can also come over here in the viewport and go Alt R, Alt G, and Alt S to reset. So Alt R resets the rotation, Alt G wrote resets the location and alt s the scale okay so just with that in mind let's start by coming to frame 10 and on frame 10 let's say we want to take the current location rotation and scale and we want to go and give all of them the values they currently are so what you can do is you can press i over here and then you can go and insert either just only a location or only a rotation or only a scale but in this case, we wanna do all three of them. So we're gonna go location, rotation, and scale. And now over here, it's added it to frame 10, which is where the slider was. If you ever add it in the wrong position, all you can do is at least left click and drag over a keyframe and then go G and just slide it to where you want it to be. So now we have a keyframe on frame 10. So let's come over to frame 70, or maybe even frame 35. Let's go a little bit closer. And now let's say we wanna move this up on the Z axis. So we're gonna go here under local Z and let's make that a meter. And let's come over here to the rotation. Let's say we're gonna rotate it 45 degrees on the Y and let's scale it on all of these vectors. So you can left click and drag down to select all of them. And let's make that 0.5 so it's only half its size. And you can see over here on 35, it hasn't added a keyframe. So this time, I'm gonna show you a different way. You can actually hover over these transforms, so you can press I. Now it's only added to the location. You can come here, I over the rotation, and I over the scale. So that's the two ways that you can add keyframes. Now you can see, if you go to frame 10 and you hit the space bar, we have this animation, okay? But there is something else I'm also gonna show you. So let's come over to frame 70. And this time, we're gonna click on this thing here called Auto King. Now you gotta be very careful of auto keying because now on frame 70, for example, if we were to just grab this cube and go G to move it, it's now automatically added in that movement, right? And if I now go R to rotate it, you can see it's automatically adding in the rotation. And if I go S to scale it, you can see it's automatically updating the scale like that. And auto keying is very handy because now we can simply just go to maybe 100 and then we can go S to scale again, maybe G to move it over here. R to rotate it, like so. And going along the timeline, you can come here at any point you want, change a few things like this, and then turn off auto king. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see this is happening. 
So I hope now you guys kind of understand at least the basics of how we can animate these things. At any point, you can actually come over here, click on a keyframe and go Shift D to duplicate and then drag it along the timeline. And this way you can actually reuse certain positions like so, which is gonna be really handy at times. In fact, if we grab the very first keyframe and we go Shift D to duplicate and drag it towards the end, now it'll start and end in the same position along our timeline, like so. There you can see. And that has been how to do it with the transforms. But let's look at a few different things. Let's go over to our materials tab. Let's come over here and let's click. It should by default have a material, okay? So we'll leave it as it is, this is the default material. But we're gonna come over here to our, scrolling down to our viewport display. And in the viewport, we can change the color. So let's just make it like a yellow color. And let's say we wanna to come to frame 20 and on frame 20, Let's just actually come here to our keying and let's go to the new keyframe type and let's just change it to one of these other ones. Now this with the breakdowns, moving, holds, extremes, this is something we really use in animation. But for now, I'm just gonna go with something like jitter, just so it's a different color keyframe. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here to this color and you can either hover over this yellow on frame 20 and press I to insert a keyframe. Or if I quickly undo that, you can just click on this little button here called animate property. That does pretty much the same thing. So now let's come over maybe to frame 50 and on frame 50, let's grab this color. Let's make it a nice blue color and then click on the animate property. And now you can see we have a keyframe. And let's come to maybe frame 90 and let's change it to a green and then click here on the property. And I'm just gonna keep going through and you can change these to whatever random colors you want. I'm gonna click on here. Maybe come over here to 155. Let's make it green, click on here. And at this point you can come through and just change it. So I'm gonna do this, and maybe I'll go to the very end and then just change it back to kind of a yellow and then click on the keyframe. So now, not only if we go to frame one, do we have the transforms being animated with the keyframes, but we have the colors changing as well. So already you guys can see how powerful keyframes are in Blender. But let's go a little bit further. Let's go over to our modifiers. Let's go to add modifier. Let's click on search and get an array modifier. So type in array and click on it. And then let's increase the spacing here a little bit. And let's come over here and increase the amount to five. And now what we can do is we can actually come here and let's maybe come to frame zero or frame one. And let's come here to the factor on the X. Let's click on the animate property. And let's come maybe to 60 and then let's decrease that value and then click on that again. And maybe we'll come up to another part in the timeline. I'm going to 111 and I'll bring it up a little bit again and then click on the animate property. And then let's just go through, I'm gonna to go to 170 and then I'll drag it down a little bit, click on the animate property again. And then let's go maybe to the end and let's make it 0.2 and give it the animate property. So now we have taken the value on an array and we've now allowed it to um, change in real time as we're animating with keyframes. So yeah, that is how, what you can do. And anywhere you see one of these animate properties, you can do the same thing. So you could, for example, maybe there's something else I can show you. You can maybe go to your world and if you were to, for example, like have this rendered, um, so if you maybe go to cycles, and then you can go to your world properties. In your render, you can go and change the environment here. But so for example, you can have it blue and then animate the property. And then over time, you can come here and maybe change the color, for example, like that. So now as we're in rendered mode, you can see that over time that color is changing in the environment. So yeah, that is really um, anything you can really grab in the scene, you can add keyframes to and animate. It really is that simple. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And even another thing, you can grab things like your light and you can um, intensities or something that you can also animate over time by changing between the values and then clicking on the animate property. So that has been a beginner's introduction, just getting you guys familiar with the concept of keyframes in Blender 4.0. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you next time.